Hello and welcome to this tutorial for users of Microsoft Excel. In this tutorial we're going to start looking at creating and formatting tables in Excel. This tutorial was created using Excel 2010 but if you're using any version of Excel from 2007 up to the versions contained in Office 2019 or Office 365 pretty much everything you see in this tutorial will apply to those versions as well. This lesson is going to look at the creation and formatting of a data table in Excel. Now a table is basically a collection of related information. So you might, for example, look at each row in a table as related data or a record of information, similar to a database, but many people use Excel because they feel it's easier to use and manage. As you can see here, I've already entered some basic information to get us started. I've got the title of the spreadsheet, Fred's Classic Movie Shows, and it's called the Ticket Sales Tracker. In other words, the purpose behind this table is to record when a ticket is sold. And you can see by the column headings what movie that ticket was sold for, some information about the film, is it a romance, is it a horror, etc. When the film is shown, and rather than have the specific date, the screening month is being recorded the quantity, who sold the tickets, where the screening will be held, and obviously some financial information. What was the ticket price and what's the total value of the sale? So there's a calculation at the end there that's going to multiply the ticket price by the quantity sold. It's a good idea to sit down before you create a table and work out the type of column headings you think you need. If you need to add more later, it's not a problem but obviously that could mean a substantial amount of additional work. There aren't too many rules that you need to think about when creating the table, but one is that you should not have blank rows or blank columns in the table, um, because later on, as you see when we come to sorting and filtering the information, blank rows and blank columns will cause Excel problems. So keep that in mind when creating the table. Okay, so let's create the first record here. So I'm going to click into cell A5, which is where my sale code number is. Nice and easy, I'm just going to type in the number one and then just tab across to the next cell. Now I'm going to have a number list as my cell code, one, two, three, four, etc. And that will be useful later on if ever I need to resort the list in its original entered order. Uh, my first movie title is going to be Casablanca. Keep in mind I'm using the tab key as I move across to enter the information in each cell and it'll become clear why I've done that when I get to the end of the record. So just for now we'll carry on and type in the genre and I'm going to choose romance as my genre for Casablanca. The month of the screening is December. Tab across again, we'll say 15 tickets are sold and that's been sold by John, one of our sellers. And it's in the north of the town. Ticket price was $3.75, again just tab across, and the total sale, we're going to put a calculation here, so I'm sure you've seen these many times in my lessons, but it's equals, click on the quantity, multiply on the keyboard, click on the ticket price. Now when I press the enter key, watch what happens. Obviously the total went in, there's a result of my calculation, but you will see that the active cell is now A6. So by tabbing across as I enter that information, when I press the enter key at the end of the record, Excel jumped me back to the beginning of the next row, ready for me to type in the next record. So we're ready to go. So I'm gonna type the number two, which you may have guessed. Tab across again, and we'll put Gone With The Wind in there. Tab across again. Now, Gone With The Wind, I'm going to classify as a romance. You can obviously if you look up Gone with the Wind on Internet Movie Database, I'm sure they've got lots of other types of genres you could fit in with Gone with the Wind, but we'll stick with Romance for now. So if I want to duplicate the previous entry, there's a few things I can do. One of them is to type Control and Apostrophe. Now I'm going to press the Escape key, which will cancel that. Another thing you can do is type Control and D, and that is similar to the Control Apostrophe, except it's actually entered the information. So if I press the Escape key now, it doesn't cancel the entry. So a couple of ways of duplicating information from a previous row if you need to. So tab across again, and the month of the screening is November. Just type that in, tab across, uh, ticket sold, let's say 25, tab across, and our salesperson this time is Carol. Again, tab across, enter south of the area, tab across again, and this time 
it's four dollars the tickets are sold for I'll tab across now here I want to duplicate the formula from the previous cell I'm going to use control and D and then press the enter key and again you'll see I jump back to the beginning of the next row ready for my next record the calculation has been copied down correctly so 4 times 25 is indeed 100 nice to see that's working and we're ready to go with the new record so let's create a third record then so type the number 3 tab across again remember tabbing across will save you a bit of time at the end with Excel will jump you back to the beginning of the next row when you press the enter key tab across again this is going to be musical tab across now this is also going to be in November and here I can right click in the cell choose pick from drop down list and Excel creates a list of all the previous entries in that column and I can select November rather than type it out so there is another thing that will happen if I just press the delete key if I type the letter N you'll see Excel has recognized there is an existing entry in that column that is matching what you've already typed so it's I've typed the letter N so it's there's only November with the N at the beginning so it's come up with that as an option if I want to accept this I simply press the tab key and it enters the information and jumps across alternatively if I didn't want to enter November and type something else I could just keep typing and eventually when I got to a point where Excel didn't recognize anything in the list it would cancel the autocomplete option so I do want to enter November so I'm going to go back when I type the V again Excel recognizes the previous entry offers that as an option again just tab across to accept so there's a few ways there that Excel can retrieve information from a previous entry and help you create your list a little bit more quickly and we'll go through and complete this record so let's say 20 tickets sold our seller is David and these have been sold in the West or the screening in the West uh, ticket price three dollars fifty and again we want to copy that formula from the previous cell control D will do that press the enter key this time it's actually jumped us back to D8 and that's because when I was showing the different options for cell D7 I jumped back and forwards between E7 and D7 so Excel has actually taken me back to the point that I started tabbing across from so not a problem here I can simply press the home key and that'll jump me to the beginning of the row I'm just completing a fourth record here and I just need to put in the ticket price at four dollars tab across and control and D will copy the formula down from the previous cell press the enter key and we jump back to the beginning of the next row and we're ready to enter a new record I'm going to enter this one and show you something interesting at the end of the row so the movie is going to be vertigo just tab across call it a suspense movie showing in October tab across again 18 tickets sold by Jane and that's in the east of the town tab across to the ticket price column enter the ticket price which is three dollars seventy and when I press the enter key you'll see something different happen and that was that the total automatically appeared I didn't have to go into that cell at all I simply press the enter key and without entering cell I9 Excel put the total in for me so let me just show you that one more time so if I delete those two cells let's go back to the price column type in the unit price of the ticket and I'll just tab into that cell this time so what happens is that as you build a table Excel begins to recognize patterns of data entry and in this case it recognizes that the final cell in the row is a calculation and I'm copying it down from a previous row and so it automatically at some point in this case the fifth record decides that it's going to do that for me and not even ask me if I want it to happen and I'll show you why that happens if you click on the file tab of Excel come down to the options button there and if you go to the advanced section in the Excel options you'll see the very first thing we see is editing options and if you come down that list so just make sure you have a check in the extend data range formats and formulas box if you want Excel to help you with automating table completion I'm just going to click cancel for now I'm going to go ahead and complete this table now and when I come back you will see the full table and we'll look at some of Excel's features to help you navigate and work with long lists of data
Okay, so here is my completed table or my extended table and if I scroll down just using the mouse wheel you can see we go down to 51 records. Now I'm just going to click into the table and just show you a couple of keyboard shortcuts you might find useful when navigating a large table and that's to use control and the arrow keys. So for example if I type control and the up arrow as you can see that jumps me straight to the top of the table into the column header row. If I type or press control and the down arrow that jumps me to the last record in the table. So if you want to enter a new record control and down arrow will jump you to the end and you can just press the down arrow one more time press the home key and you're ready to carry on entering data. I'll just click back into the table and also just show you that control and the right arrow key will jump you to the final column of the table control and the left arrow key will jump you to the first column. You can obviously also use the page up and page down keys and you can also use the good old fashioned scroll bars just click and drag to move up and down and you also have left and right scroll bars if you have a table that extends over many more columns than I have here. One thing that becomes immediately apparent with a longer table is that my column headings disappear as I scroll down so I'll just scroll back up and you'll see there they are. Now the problem there as I scroll down and if I'm let's say somewhere here and I want to know what the numbers in column E mean well there's no way of knowing if I'm new to this table until I scroll back up and discover that it's actually the ticket quantity. Excel has a solution to that problem and I'm going to just click into cell A5 which is the first cell of my first record go to the view tab and then click on the freeze panes button that gives me a drop down list there and the first option says freeze panes and if you look at the information there or the detail it says keep rows and columns visible while the rest of the worksheet scrolls just for now I'm just going to click on freeze panes and you'll see what happens so a line appears and that's a dividing line between rows 4 and 5 and as I scroll down you'll see the effect is that everything from row 4 up to row 1 is essentially locked on the screen and everything below row 4 is able to scroll as normal so in other words with a long table no matter whereabouts I am in that table I can clearly see that column E is of course ticket quantity and I don't have to scroll back up to the top to discover that. If you want to remove the freeze option simply go back to the freeze panes button and choose the first option again unfreeze panes if you want to have columns and rows fixed, for example, let's say I'm going to scroll to the right, but I always want to have the movie title visible as I scroll right. I'm just going to click into cell C5 and when I freeze, you will see that everything above and to the left of the selection is essentially locked. So go back to freeze panes, click the freeze panes option, the first option there. And now you'll see I have a vertical and horizontal line that indicates where the division occurs. If I scroll down, that behaves normally. And if I just scroll to the right, you'll see that columns A and B are locked and everything from C onwards scrolls as normal. I'm going to remove the freeze again. So just click unfreeze. Just to let you know before I unfreeze, to let you know the other options, I think they're self-explanatory freeze top row and freeze first column will do just what they say and when you do apply these two you don't need to click on a particular cell these actions will take place regardless of what cell you have selected on the worksheet so if I click on unfreeze panes now that takes away the freeze feature and I want to show you another way you can split the spreadsheet so you can see different parts of the table at the same time and I'm going to click anywhere in row 14 within the table it doesn't really matter in fact as you will see and again make sure you have the view tab selected in the window section we have this option here split and if I click on that you'll see what happens we get a vertical and a horizontal gray bar that splits the screen into four windows now I can drag these bars around just by clicking and dragging as you see so I can reposition how I view the data so if I have a large table with multiple columns or many more than I have here and multiple rows I can for example click in this bottom left window 
um, scroll up and down and you'll notice that the left and right windows scroll simultaneously so they are synchronized. Likewise if I click into the right window or the bottom right in this case and scroll left and right you'll see that the top right and bottom right windows scroll simultaneously as well. In this case I don't really need all four windows I just want to split it horizontally so I'm going to drag this vertical bar all the way over to the left right the way to the row labels release the mouse and that vertical split has disappeared and now I just have my horizontal split and I can scroll down all the way to the bottom of the table and so I can see some information from the bottom of the table and some from the top and both windows scroll independently. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're using the split feature is that you can't have freeze and split simultaneously so if I click into cell A5 go to freeze panes, choose freeze panes, you'll see it just doesn't work and the freeze has actually occurred where the split line was. So I'm going to go back to the freeze panes option, choose unfreeze, the split reappears and what you need to do is click the split button to remove the split, then go to the cell where you want the freeze to occur, click freeze panes, apply the freeze panes option and we get back to the situation I had originally which is where I have everything from row 4 above locked and everything from row 5 below is free to scroll. So that's how I'm going to leave it, I'm going to save that and when you save with freeze applied it will remember so the next time the file is opened your freeze will be in place. That completes this first look at tables, you've seen how to create a table, different methods of entering data and using things like freeze and split to help with viewing and navigating large tables. I hope you found it useful and you can apply some of the things you've seen here to the spreadsheets that you're working on. But in the meantime, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.